This is the Xiaomi 20,000 milliamp Pro. And recently, whilst researching for a power bank capable of not just fast charging a phone, but also larger devices such as a Nintendo Switch, iPad, or hell, even in a pinch, a laptop, I came across this guy online and for the price, it seems unreasonably good. The problem with any of these power banks, however, is what you read on the label is often very different from the kind of performance you can expect in reality. So I spent the last three days testing to find out exactly what this thing is made of. And what kind of performance can you actually expect? Let's find out. There are two main problems that I typically find with these power banks. The first, which is just an unfortunate standard that the industry has started to use milliamp hours to describe the amount of capacity you can expect from these batteries. And the issue with that is that that is at a set voltage which you're unlikely to be using uh, to charge your devices. It's probably impossible to actually get 20,000 milliamps out of this thing, even if you had 100% efficiency. The second issue that I really have with these power banks is the efficiency whilst fast charging. Whilst many of these power banks may be able to fast charge your device using one of the various fast charge protocols out there, the reality is that in doing so, you often rapidly reduce the amount of capacity that you're ever gonna get out of these cells. And that's just because of bad efficiency. Let's get into the testing. So in order to test this power bank, what I did was discharge it at four different voltage settings. Uh, to simulate what it would be like to discharge with various tech devices out there. The main thing I looked at was watt hours and how quickly they reduce at the various different power loads. And there's a few reasons that I prefer to use watt hours over milliamp hours, but we won't get into that and we can state both the results anyway. So for the first test, I reduced the power at five volts, one amp. And I did this to simulate under very favorable conditions what this power bank is able to produce. And what I got was this complete full charge to a complete discharge, the power bank was running for 14 hours and 32 minutes. That's a long time. It output 71.27 watt hours and 14,546 milliamp hours. And you'll be able to get all of these results from a spreadsheet in the description below. What this amounts to when looking at watt hours is an efficiency of 96%, which is an incredible output to one of these devices, able to charge at anything above 90% efficiency. Next, we stepped it up to 9 volt 2 amps for you iPhone users out there. This is the fast charge rate for an iPhone, 18 watts. Following that, we did 10 volts, 3 amps. I don't know why, we needed to pick somewhere in between that and the max. And 30 watts is roughly what you might get out of, say, an iPad charging. And then finally, we max things out. 45 watts, 20 volts, 2.25 amps. Now look, you didn't buy a 45 watt power bank to slow charge your smartphone, so Let's step things up. For the 18 watt test, what we got back was 67.79 watt hours. Discharge over three hours and 44 minutes. And that gives us an efficiency of 91%. Even that is really impressive. 91% efficiency uh, at an 18 watt discharge rate is really, really great. For the third test, the 30 watt discharge, battery discharge in two hours and 16 minutes, we've got 63.52 watt hours. And that's really an impressive result, that's 85%. And 85% is often what you get out of these cheaper power banks for their normal efficiency, just converting the internal voltage of this battery to the five volts at which you need to slow charge the normal smartphone. So even at what is a pretty heavy load for a power bank, you're getting very, very good efficiency. And at this point, I'm really impressed. The big test, 45 watts, 20 volts at 2.5 amps, we finally saw a fair chunk of drop off. And to be fair, I think that might be what we can expect from these power banks at this stage. It's an awful lot of power and demand from a portable charging device. So what we got was 47.8 watt hours discharging at that rate. And that gives us just 64% efficiency. And so, yeah, that's a pretty significant drop off. But overall, given all those results, I really am impressed with this device. I think for the price, it's gonna be hard to compete with. And the only thing I really think that cuts you out from is charging maybe your laptop. And even then, in a pinch, you can even be able to give it a little bit of a top up. Do I think you should buy this device? Yeah, why not? This is crazy value. I live in Vietnam and the prices are a little bit different, I'm sure, from where you live. I'm gonna list the Amazon price and link in the description if it exists. But here in Vietnam, this is the equivalent of 30 US dollars. And for the price, I 
think this is pretty much unbeatable. Again, for some pretty high watt outputs there, you're seeing some of the best efficiencies you're gonna find out of any power bank, let alone what is really, really budget device. Where you see just the massive drop-offs are from that really high 45 uh, watt rating. And yes, this is capable of that, but just at horrific efficiency. So I don't think that you could reasonably expect to power larger devices such as laptops from this device maybe lighter ones like the MacBook Air or something like that. But look, if you, like I, were looking for something to charge those mid-range devices, fast charge phones, Nintendo Switches, iPads, I think this is pretty much unbeatable for the price and I would highly recommend it. That's it for this one guys. If you like what you saw, please stick around, please subscribe. With this channel, I really like playing with batteries and that's the goal for this channel. So if you like this kind of thing, breakdowns of power devices, tear downs, stick around, we're going to be doing more with this kind of stuff. I'll see you next time.